Greetings, I'm Cedric Jones, and I'm here to tell you that it's all a conspiracy. The flat earth, the heat of the flat earth, it's not really flat earth. It's actually a hollow earth, damn it, and the turn of the frog's gang. It's not a flat earth, it's not a round earth. We actually live on the back of a giant frog, people. It's a donut earth. It's a halo earth, people. Greetings, I'm Shad, and you know, there is a bit of a conspiracy in the modern day regarding the Flat Earth. Nope. No, no, not, not the one you're thinking of, okay? It's that everyone in the medieval period believed the Earth was flat. We hear it all the time, they're all uneducated, when in reality, uh, actually no, uh, most people in the medieval period knew the Earth was round. And there's a lot of points of evidence that I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, but before we dive into that, you're going to want to find out how to stop those interdimensional space cells from stealing your identity online. Because seriously, interdimensional space elves, lizard people, as well as hackers trying to steal your identity, I guess you could include those, are actually a problem, all right? Um, and for me, who has so much of my livelihood online, any vulnerability for stealing my personal information is a big problem, which is of course why I use NordVPN, who is the sponsor of this video. These hackers are demons, people! They're Satans! I'll rip my shirt off if I could, but I'm wearing a I have the documents, people! Seriously though, NordVPN is great, and having a VPN is really important. In fact, I'd say it's even better than super male vitality. I if you need something like that, I mean, my male vitality is fine, I got five children. You can get a huge discount on a two-year plan, as well as a couple of free months, one to four months, depending on what you pick, if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Shadowversity. Then there is the massive bonus of getting access to region lock content. And if you think that you don't have content that is locked away from your region, no, there is. There is. Whether it's coming from something that was produced, I don't know, from BBC in Britain or if it was made in America. I'm an Australian, so we have heaps of region lock content, okay? Just getting access to something like HBO is a big problem because no, we're not allowed to see it. Like, it's locked off. You're in Australia. Because NordVPN masks your IP address and gives you a new IP address that can appear as if you are from America or Britain or anywhere in the world, you can get access to the content that was locked to that region, which is brilliant. So with one click, now I'm American. Is this the American accent? And we like apple pie and guns. America. And with another click, now I'm Italiano. In Italia, we like pizza. Lots of pizza. And then another click, I am from the Germany. Because in Germany we like the bratwurst. The bratwurst makes my intestines very gassy. And with another click, a Russian. Because in Russia I use a VPN so I do not get gulag. So look, NordVPN is brilliant. Protect your data online. Nord has servers the world wide over so you can you know, be from anywhere, as I just mentioned. The one account you have with NordVPN allows you to put on multiple devices, so you're not just protecting one. It's ultra fast and lightweight. You don't even notice that it's on. It doesn't affect your performance. So if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash shadowversity, you can get a massive discount on a two year plan. So just try it, give, give it a go. And remember, you can get up to four months free as well. And it's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. So give it a go, just try it. You can get a huge discount. And if you don't like it, remember, 30 day money back guarantee. And once you use it, you'll probably find that, hey, I really like the extra security and getting access to all this additional content. Brilliant. And thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Back to the serious topic, even though I'm not a very serious person, I like to be, you know, lighthearted and things. So yeah, uh, flat earth, medieval people knew the earth was round. And uh, in an, like a context to this, the, the myth, the, you know, that medieval people didn't believe the earth was round is just one of those additional things that come into the idea that they were uneducated, superstitious, and that whole, you know, looking down on that period. When in reality, and the whole purpose behind Medieval Misconceptions, this series, is to demonstrate that the people of the medieval period were people, as much as us. Now, to think that we are so superior intelligent is just wrong. In fact, we're making mistakes in the modern day that people in the past and medieval period actually d weren't doing and they could just figure it out through observable reality. And so sometimes even our own level of knowledge can logic us into these really warped interpretations of just 
plain common sense. So where did this myth actually come about that medieval people believed the Earth was flat? Well, as with many other misconceptions of the medieval period, it uh, was something that arose much later and then people ascribed to the medieval period. And there's actually a number of things that people take from Victorian times, Renaissance, and just assume, ah, oh, the Dark Ages, right? That's the medieval period, that's when people are all idiots. Well, this must have happened in the Dark Ages. No, all right? Like, witch burning is a classic example. Most of the witch burning that happened throughout the past happened after the medieval period. I mean, they did burn people at the stake, but that was more for being heretics, uh, the judge, like Joan of Arc style, than at being witches. What we can find when we look at the medieval period is that these people were very similar to us. Of course, there were the dumb ones, all right? But then there were also the really smart ones that learnt through observation. Now, it's not to say that everything they believed was correct. Uh, there are some beliefs that were wrong, like their idea of germ transmission, so the concept that sickness was carried through the air, bad smell, miasma and stuff, this is incorrect. But you can understand that it comes from a vein of logic through observation. And this is actually how they could confirm that the Earth was round, because there are certain key observations you can make to figure this out. Listen to this quote from Thomas uh, Qua Aquinas, Aquinas? Bad with pronunciation. Uh, that says, The astronomer and the physicist both may prove the same conclusion that the Earth, for instance, is round. The astronomer by means of mathematics, but the physicist by means of matter itself. So these are individuals that are observing the world and confirming things, because the idea that the Earth was round pre-existed the medieval period. The Romans knew it, okay? And just because Rome became decentralized, it's, a, it's another misconception to say Rome fell, all right? It became decentralized. It was not able to maintain authority and power over all its holdings. But Rome actually stuck around for a bit longer, and well, many people even tried to bring it back. But that's beside the point, because, because Rome continued on, a lot of the knowledge that Rome had also was followed. It's not like everything was lost. Listen to this one from Bede, B-E-D, I don't know, Bede, 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 I, I don't know the, where to put the emphasis on that, but it, it is Bede, 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 the Venerable, he was an Anglo-Saxon monk, and he says this, not without reason is the earth called the orb of the world on the pages of holy scripture and of ordinary literature. It is, in fact, set like a sphere in the middle of the whole universe. Now, that belief that they believe the earth was the center of the universe, that is a misconception that they had, and it came from kind of a religious mindset, that being children of God being so important, okay, and God creating the universe, which makes sense, the Earth would be the center of the universe then, because of all that. But this does lead into another misconception, which is the idea that the church suppressed, you know, science and uh, education and things like that. Well, no, actually, the medieval church actively sought after research, learning, okay, because they thought about learning of the world would enlighten them and lead them to know more about God. So yes, in many instances, the church actively promoted learning and they weren't this kind of book burning heretic, how dare you say anything that, you know, is new or whatever that is constantly portrayed in regards to the medieval period. It's not to say they got everything right, but even when you look at the theories and stuff they got wrong, for instance, how the body was divided into like four types of elements and uh, different food encourage different elements and how they approach six and stuff like that. It's very wrong, but it's you can see how it was based on a vein of logic and it's them trying to work things out through observation. What's also a little interesting and a bit frustrating is how often this a misconception needs to be debunked, because it's been debunked before. The book Columbus and the Modern Historians, which was written by historian Geoffrey Burton, listen to what he says in this. With extraordinarily few exceptions, no educated person in the history of Western civilization from the 3rd century BC onwards believed that the Earth was flat. <laughs> Seriously. Russell kind of points out the reasons why this, you know, pernicious misconception uh, gained popularity was through the writings of people like John William Draper, Andrew Dickens White, and a couple of other people. But we can find heaps of points of evidence of medieval people knowing the Earth was round, not just in written records, but also artistic ones. Like, like when Earth is depicted, oftentimes they didn't have like the idea of what the Earth looked like in terms of continents and things, but it's depicted as a circle sphere, all right? They knew the Earth was round. Listen to this quote from Johannes de 
Sacrobosco. That Earth 2 is round is shown thus. So this is someone who lived from the year 1195 to 1256. All right, this is very much a medieval person and he is reasoning why the Earth is round. And I find it really interesting because there are some people in the modern day who claim the Earth is flat through, you look, it's flat. And, and you know, yeah, I'm talking about flat earthers, of course. And it, I, I find it interesting sometimes listening to their arguments. And uh, that's to obviously cutting the observation far too short and not actually noticing some really significant things. And this medieval person was noticing those important things where people in the modern day are saying, uh, like, going to have some very creative, you know, logical gymnastics to reason away these, ty these types of observations. And so he says that the Earth too is round is shown thus. The signs and stars do not rise and set the same for all men everywhere, but rise and set sooner for those in the east than for those in the west. And of this there is no other cause than the bulge of the Earth. Moreover, celestial phenomena evidence that they rise sooner for Orientals than for Westerners. For one and the same same eclipse of the moon, which appears to us in the first hour of the night, appears to Orientals about the third hour of the night, which proves that they had night and sunset before we did, of which setting the bulge of the earth is the cause. Smart men. Very, very smart men. <laughs> like, and this is a medieval person. Oh yeah, they're all idiots. They can't just observe things in the natural world around them and use really solid logical reasoning to come to a correct conclusion. No, they're all uneducated idiots who never bathed. And this guy isn't the only one. Like I said, there's a lot of points of evidence, written and artistic, showing medieval people, for very much a large part, portion of them, knew the earth was round, okay? Now, I'm not saying it's impossible that one or two people believe the earth was flat, kind of like in the modern day, of course, right? But the large accepted reality and truth of the world that medieval people understood was that it was round. So that is the first thing that I really want to cover in this medieval misconceptions. But I also want to cover another one. And this is again kind of like, it's a small thing. And so uh, I'm, I'm putting more than one into, the, into this episode. And it's that medieval people all died really young. And uh, this one is, uh, like I said, doesn't deserve this whole video because answering it is actually really easy and simple. And uh, people get the average age of death from the medieval period by including the high number of infant mortality, okay? Because when you like, actually put in that, yeah, the average ends up being really, really low. But the reality is, if you were able to live into adulthood, chances were you would live, you know, beyond 60 years old. One of the direct points of evidence, okay, that we know this, if people only live to like 30 on average, they would be considered old, all right? This is the old person, stuff like that. But no, medieval records show that they considered someone to be old when they reached around 60 and older and actually looked old, you know? The, the, the way people look when they actually get old, not the way people look on average when they're 30 years old, which is still young. I'm, I'm over 30, I'm still young, I think it's my, I'm a young bracket, okay? I think you consider yourself starting to get old when you're past 50 at least. And it's, oh. You've got some, uh, some grey hairs there though. I do have grey hairs, okay, but it's, that's a sign of wisdom, not age, alright? Cope. So yes, the thing that skews the numbers and therefore the interpretation of this, that everyone only lived about 30 years old, is the high infant mortality and also the kind of spikes of large-scale death that happened in the medieval period due to warfare and disease outbreaks, the Black Death, all right? And so, now that whole, whole video on medieval mis misconceptions about the Black Death, if you're interested. So I'm not saying it wasn't easier to die back then. Uh, no, it was much easier to die, specifically for infants, all right? Uh, okay, so there are a lot of cases where death was a lot more common, but a lot of these types of death outside of infant mortality would affect anyone, regardless of age, okay? Especially warfare and things. But if you exclude those spikes in infant mortality, the average age of the medieval person easily could reach 70 years and older. And that's happened enough for them to know that is what old age is. And so you'd only identify old age if that was a common denominator of what old age was, not 30 years old, okay? You'd have 30 years old would be the old age and anyone who reached 70 would be like ancient. And there we go, that one is also debunked and uh, doesn't take too much effort to do so, which is why it didn't de deserve its own dedicated video on the subject. And that's probably what I'll try and do with some future medieval misconception videos, unless it's a, it's a real big meaty one. Uh, try and do a couple, you know, in each episode. But here we go. Medieval people were not, for the large part, not flat earthers, and most of them lived well into old age, which is 
well, you know, what's old age after 60 years old? It's right there. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And of course, I hope to see you again. So until that time, farewell. Well.